Barbara Stanwyck was a survivor without self-pity. She was born Ruby Stevens in Brooklyn, New York in 1907. Raised by an older sister who was forced at times to leave her in foster care, she never had it easy. Watching her on film, she knew how to take care of herself. Oh, excuse me. My hand shakes though when I'm around you. I've always felt there was an uncommon honesty in all her work. Listen, I don't play in any game unless it's on the up and up. Even when she's playing someone far removed from herself, she somehow shines through, and it is this we connect to. Befitting her upbringing, she often played the tough, determined woman who rose to the top by the force of her personality. Oh, yeah? But though her characters often resorted to tricks and manipulation, this was never true of her performances. The poised, independent presence she was known for often betrayed another side. I don't know what's the matter with me. I seem to be going to pieces. There was a vulnerability that, once revealed, always felt genuine. It was a vulnerability you could feel her trying to control as if she didn't want the audience to have access to it, as if it came out against her will. It was as if you could see Ruby Stevens, that girl from Brooklyn, always coming through the great actress Barbara Stanwyck. Her performances were deceptively casual. She had an ease, grace, and charm that never drew attention to the technique, but she was always flawless. She knew each film she was shooting inside and out, but her work still felt spontaneous and immediate. Have you had any experience? Plenty. In Double Indemnity, Stanwyck initially seems miscast as the femme fatale, but what she brings to the character is something much more interesting than the archetypal seductress. There's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff. 45 miles an hour. How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. Stanwyck's Phyllis seduces Fred McMurray's Walter Neff, not primarily through sex appeal, but through their mutual identification. She suggests their fates are intertwined. You planned the whole thing. I only wanted him dead. And I'm the one that fixed it so he was dead. Is that what you're telling me? And nobody's pulling out. We went into this together and we're coming out at the end together. It's straight down the line for both of us. Remember? He knows she's no good, but she presents him with a more confident model of his own dark side. What are you honking the horn for? Look at her eyes in the scene when McMurray kills her husband. We see her shift from revulsion to determination, but there's something else in the eyes more complicated and enigmatic. Stanwyck, for me, has always been a great role model because while she had enormous range, she brought something deeply personal to everything she did. I never knew until tonight about your aunt or that man, the one they hung, the man that you and Walter killed. Oh. She could bring sympathy to the most ruthless and nasty of her characters. Stanwyck could elevate potentially sentimental material like Stella Dallas with her strength and integrity. She also received the first of four Oscar nominations for this role. I wonder if I could clunk him on the head with this. Don't do that. But to me, her best role was as a playful conniver. The type that toys with a man for her own ends, but ultimately winds up falling for him. A victim of her own con game, as in The Lady Eve, Ball of Fire, and Meet John Doe. In these performances, her characters were also performing, which meant she was often playing two emotional registers at once, slyly teasing us with her witty persona and then showing us the cracks in the facade. This required a canny brilliance. And the result is that she was one of our truly great comedic actresses. Well, what do you know about that? I thought at least one of you had four aces. For all her smarts and sense of worldly independence, she had great rapport with her leading men. I love watching her grow smitten with Gary Cooper and meet John Doe. You know, he's got a nice face, hasn't he? Or to watch her making fun of Henry Fonda and the Lady Eve and falling for him at the same time. <sighs> trying to romance him and then trying to protect him from herself because she loves him. Thank you. The movie wouldn't work if she didn't seduce us at the same time she seduces him. She's hilarious and brilliant, and she makes it look so damn easy. 
As director Frank Capra said, who used her more than he did any other actress, when she turned it on, everything else stopped. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Jennifer Jason Lee.